ever be out raced again and uh, said segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever as he stood in front of that, uh, that schoolhouse door. I mean, it, there is a tradition of pandering politicians appealing to the worst impulses uh, in the population. I don't know if Rick Lazio believes what he says or not. I do know that he sees an opportunity uh, and he is seizing that opportunity. It's disgusting and disgraceful. And my question is, how bad do you want to be governor? Are you really yeah. willing to throw a whole set of Americans under the bus just so you can be governor. I want to also be clear, um, Congressman Lazio was uh, not fringe. He ran a very close race against Hillary Clinton for the Senate. Um, uh, they were neck and neck. And See, I, yeah, I, think, there, I, I think what we, we have to, in a sense, pull back for a second and say there are two strains, both in America, but there are two strains in all human beings. There's a strain in human being that is afraid of the other. There's a strain in the human being that, that when we get scared and we get insecure, we either, you know, fight, fleet, or f fight, uh, we're either afraid and fight, we either freeze, you know, or we either run away. And, and, and so that fear is really real. And then there's this other strain in us as human beings that wants to reach out, that wants to connect, that recognizes that we are in this together. And those two strains, which are in every single person, are now being played out in the larger political and cultural landscape. And we have to be really, really, those of us who, who, who for whatever reasons, are lucky enough to not be afraid, because it's really, there's a certain amount of it that's just luck, how we were raised and, and, and who we got to meet, that, that what we have to do is there's, we have to mitigate the fear, not make the fear worse. Amy? Uh, t let me just bring in Talat Hamdani. Uh, you leave here and you're going to go to a news conference outside. Uh, the it's a meeting to write. A meeting. A meeting to how to deal with this issue and many uh, different organizations uh, who are supporting this cause fighting for the you know, rights of all Americans, which now are being violated. Because from my perspective, Muslims are as equal members, citizens, as of any other faith on this country, in this country. They died on 9-11. They were the first responders. They also died after helping. Mm -hmm. Their children are on the front lines. So when it comes when to— When you say on the front lines, where? In Afghanistan and Iraq. Muslims are fighting, too. So when it comes for us to pay our duties, we do it. But when it comes to us demanding our rights, we are not getting it. We are being told, you know, you are a terrorist, which is very wrong. What is mine is mine. I'm doing my duty, and I want my rights. And this stoking the fear that, you know, all these politicians are jumping in on the bandwagon and trying to make it exploit. The tragedy of all those 3,000 people killed for their own political expediency, it's disgraceful. I wanted to ask Congressman Ellison, um, the reports of uh, from Gainesville, Florida, a Florida church with Islam is of the devil signs in its front lawn, mm. plans to host an international burn a Quran day on the ninth anniversary of the September 11th attacks. It reminds me back when yeah. you were first elected, the whole controversy around yeah. your swearing in, wanting it to, wanting to do it on a Quran. Well, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, I'd like to share with you is that when I met President Bush face to face, he shook my hand vigorously and he said that he thought it was a good thing and that uh, he was happy that I was in the Congress. So, I mean, I think it's true that, you know, a few years— He thought it was a good thing years, that you were, um, good, you were swearing on, actually, it was Abraham Lincoln's Bible, is that right? Jesus. No, no, it was I mean, Thomas Jefferson's Quran. I mean, Quran. Thomas Jefferson's Quran. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 yeah, President Bush was supportive, and, you know, President Bush is well aware that, you know, I'm a liberal Democrat and he's a conservative, but that did not stop us from agreeing that America had a very important heritage of religious tolerance that we both needed to celebrate. Uh, but you know what? This is just one of those examples of what happens when politicians and cultural leaders sort of light the fuse. And it does end up in extremely tragic situations, and that's why it's so important that you're doing this program. And I just want to say to the rabbi and to Ms. Talal, who, those of you who live in New York, that I am exceedingly proud of you. And I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing, because 
You know, we've got to offer that kind of narrative. Most New Yorkers, a plurality of New Yorkers, still believe in our First Amendment heritage. I'm so proud Ellison, of Mayor we just have a, Bloomberg. A few seconds left, and I just want to ask you, what political rights do Muslim Americans have now? What political price can they exact we with the Democrats and Republicans using this as political capital? Well, what, what actual practical rights Muslims have in America today is in the balance. It's being determined as we speak. The fact is, is that, that the question you asked me will be answered if this mosque goes forward. And if it doesn't, uh, I think it will also be answered. Uh, and so the fact is it's time to get busy, to, to reach out in love, to reach out in brother and sisterhood, and to make sure that all Americans can claim the promises of the First Amendment. I want to thank you all for being with us. And this is certainly a conversation that will continue. Congressman Keith Ellison joining us from Minneapolis, first Muslim congressman to be elected to Congress. Uh, Professor Esposito from Georgetown University. Uh, Rabbi Erwin Kula, who is president of National Jewish Center for Learning and Leadership. And Talat Hamdani, who lost her son at 9-11. I'm Amy Goodman with Anjali Kama. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.